Hey guys, thanks for checking out the channel. My name is Greg. If you are new here, um, one of my favorite things to do is just make music and really inspire people in the process. And I see most of the barriers that people have with making music is not knowing how to do things in Logic Pro um, or any DAW for that matter. Um, a lot of these principles follow ac across all digital audio workstations, but this is an open invitation to just kind of peek over my shoulder and watch music being made. So I... A lot of the music styles I, I do are very simple in the sense that there's not a whole lot of orchestration or really um, arrangement or composition that's super uh, music theory deep, although this might be a cool opportunity to kind of pick up on some music theory if you're not familiar. Let's get into it. Um, I've got an audio track right here. Well, now I do. And let's, I don't know, let's just see what happens. Let's open up some MIDI instruments. And um, I'm actually using a program called Keycaster. And let's see. You can actually see the key commands that I use as I use them. Open up a MIDI track. Let's go to Audio Unit. Um, if you're using Logic Pro without any third-party plugins, this will be empty. Or I might say Apple. But um, I like to use a lot of stuff that does not come with Logic. And this is really kind of me exercising some creative muscles. Uh, oh, this is the new one. This came out yesterday. And uh, it's brand new, so I might play with that a little bit, or or not. I don't know. We'll see. So first thing I want to do is probably let's do like a synth wave thing. Also, the commentary that I use whenever I'm doing this, I'm I'm learning stuff, and I'm really just kind of talking out as I see stuff happen. I'm just gonna kind of build out some instruments right here. So I'm double clicking in open space to duplicate the type of channel I already have. So I'm just making a handful of uh, new MIDI tracks. So let's go to. I've really been digging some of this stuff in Quick Sampler. So let's do Pad, Deep in Thought is another one of my favorites. Just a very simple mellow pad. It's kind of cool. So here's like our synth wave. This is going to be like a bass. Let's uh, find a bass sound. Oh my gosh. I like that. Let's keep that. Use my deep in thought. Although that's going to be that's going to be filtered. So it's a lot of high end. I don't want really from a bass. Let's create a noise generator. So I'm pretty sure I could find plenty of these plugins that could do this for me. Although I've I don't know. I like digging into massive whenever I do this. It's got a great noise generator with um, a color knob that actually changes like the the bit quality and I don't know turn off these oscillators you 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 I'm not using the mod oscillator I'm not using feedback so this is all we're left with Let's turn up the amp color and uh, without being too much of a I don't know tutorial in this I'm just gonna go ahead and assign these to macros Okay, so I want it to fade up as I turn the knob up. So let's turn it down and then raise our mod up. Cool. And I'll do a second one for amplitude. Turn it all the way up. Actually, turn it all the way down and sweep it up. So now as I turn up this knob, it affects that. And a final thing I'll do is add a reverb. Let's do a reverb up here. And... Turn off effect two. Okay, so I'm going to tie reverb to macro three. And this will be a mix. I had another idea. I'm going to turn this off. Let's assign it to an envelope. So envelope, I think four is dedicated to the amp. Let's do envelope one. So this will be, let's turn down our sustain. So essentially, as I play a note, the reverb is going up in uh, mix and then tailing back down.
Eh, it's not much. But that's going to be kind of like a... Or like a drop. Let's just drop a note in here and so we can play with it. Let's do C3. A noise generator playing white noise is not going to follow what key you're pressing. So whatever I play, it's going to play the exact same noise. Um, drag this out a little bit. Let's go four bars. And uh, this one right here is going to be a drum kit, electronic drum kit, analog circuits. You better believe we're doing synth wave. <laughs> Let's go 86 BPM. Ah, let's bump it up. Let's go 90. I'm not playing with the metronome, so I'm getting, getting off the, the grid. Now, I'm going to do this really quickly, duplicate that channel, and it's only going to be the kick drum. So let's uh, let me remove that, and let's double time the click by uh, option dragging after selecting. So this, I'm actually going to turn off our stereo output. So this is going to make no noise. This is just to produce a signal that triggers a side chain, uh, which is essentially um, a side chain is following the source of another instrument. Let's add a side chain to compressor <clears throat> on our noise. And this will be set up to do, I better rename it so I can find it later. Uh, side chain. And I'll do this. All right, so now I have a side chain source that is gonna be telling the noise generator. I'll title it noise. It's gonna be like a swoosh kind of sound. But it has, it has to listen to some source in order to compress. So let's change our source to instrument sidechain. And you'll see this start to jump up and down. Cool. Sidechain, let's change it to peak. It's either gonna it's either gonna listen to the peak or the average volume. So the peak is obvi obviously the loudest part. And RMS is root means squared or average. I guess it's kind of like a nominal average. <clears throat> and uh you know let's let's follow the amp envelope on envelope four of that noise and let's just bring it all the way down but i'll have a longer decay okay so that's um we're getting somewhere let's hit command j to join just to clean it up a little bit. All right, so now what do we do? I'm gonna add an arpeggiator. I have a preset that I've already made, basically whatever I play. It just hits 16th notes. So let's try it. I'm gonna change that patch though. I want a little bit more of a, uh, I don't know, like staccato kind of sound. So let's uh, change the decay. That could be pretty cool. I might, I might like that. So let's hear. I'm just going to play like a four note riff. So I did... Um, we have six, one, two. So drop down to a four or a five. Now a four. Also, if you're hearing notes as you change them, turn off uh, MIDI out. That way you can change notes without having to listen to it every time you play or click a note. So for this instance, let's make sure it's in time. These are going to follow essentially quarter notes. This. Okay, so this is going to be hit on the syncopation. So this is playing not on the downbeat or on a you know, corresponding beat, but on the upbeat of two. Let's clean these up a little bit, because if I loop it, let's change this. 
uh, hit Command A to select all. If you option drag the velocity, I have velocity tied to my right click on my mouse. I just like them to all be the same volume. So I noticed this has a lot of bit, um, a lot of bit of reverb. So let's bring that down a little bit. Um, let's change that. So I want this, instead of going up to the two, change it down to a four. That's number system in use. Let's raise it up an octave. Now I like that, although I'm not so sure I love the patch, the sound that I'm using. Um, yeah, I'm sure I could get in here and change the actual ADSR uh, envelope of what I'm playing, but I think I'm gonna choose another patch, especially if I'm playing that quick of um, quick of notes. All right, let's lower the cutoff because I'm getting a lot of high frequency stuff that I don't really need. Now let's get some uh, some bounce into that kick and snare pattern. I say it's kick and snare. I mean I mean the bass. So let's change this. And uh, I'm gonna side chain that as well. So let's do compressor stereo. Let's go over here and change our input source to our side chain kick peak. And I'm gonna adjust these to taste. I want. Auto gain turned off, and same on this one. I need to make a preset or a default patch that does not have the uh, auto gain, because I primarily use the stock Logic plugin for, you know, sidechain stuff. I got a plug-in preset that I love, and it's an Omnisphere patch. Um, so let's just get in here and let's slap on that preset. Uh, it's called Low Energy. And it's essentially the same thing. But it also has an arpeggiated. I like that. So that's going to be a really fun one to play with as well. I might layer that and kind of filter out high end and low end um, on those two bass patches. But let's get in here, change our ARP to a, let's do double time. Cool. That's easy. Presets are fun. So let's just hear this preset with, uh, let's hit X to open up our mixer bring in our compressor, let's duplicate it. We're getting somewhere. So next up, um, every drum beat, I think drum beats work best whenever they have uh, some repetition, but also each um, block of the track kind of sounds like its own thing. So if you have really the same beat going throughout the entire track, it's going to feel very dull because there's no movement. So what I'm going to do here is add in some sort of like shakers, hi-hats, um, just alternate kind of sounds. So let's duplicate everything because this is going to be the next phase or the next uh, repetition. So the analog circuits, um, I'm not stoked. This will be just a side chain. I'm not too crazy about the built-in other stuff, but I think. Uh, 
Um, I like that shaker. So let's just uh, make another channel. Command D to duplicate. This will be shaker. Snare. Cool. So let's go down here to shaker. And I'm going to be very, very lazy. Let's just hit one note. Two, three, four. So the purpose of this now is I'm going to extend this note. Make sure it's quantized to the downbeat. Make sure it's one bar. Delete this. Let's do option drag forward and back. When you option drag, it changes the length of the region as well as the note within that, or the notes within that. Okay. So now that we have a shaker track, let's just, uh, let's split that. Now the thought between doing this, <clears throat> if I want to start it up bar five, there's no MIDI on signal if I just have one long note from measure one to the end. So basically, I'll probably just do that. Um, my next step would be to open up this up, find out where our, there it is. So this note, let's do an arpeggiator on that. Oh boy, here we go. So that's easy. Now let's sidechain this. So I want everything to follow the pulsation of the uh, sidechain. Pretty much everything. Turn off auto gain. Nice. I, th I think we're making some progress. Um, let's just play very easy block chords with our deep in thought patch. easy. Uh, make it nice and pretty. Let's change it to 16th notes. Let's do our QWE just to quantize, extend note length to sustain. And uh, E I've dedicated to uh, correct overlapping notes. So if I have two notes, if I have a no MIDI on, MIDI on, it changes it to MIDI on, MIDI off, MIDI on. So it, it helps clean up any repeated notes that might not be triggered properly. And you guessed it, let's uh, sidechain. Except I'm gonna do a halftime sidechain. I'll call this one half <laughs> sidechain because it's original. But let's basically uh, drag down this, duplicate, cut it in half, and option drag it out. So now it's just on every other beat. Well, it should be. So let's hear this now. This will be... Duplicate, open this up. This will be side chain one half. All right. So let's go to our deep in thought. Compressor, change our input to one half side chain, which would be right there. Now the reason for this is I wanted a, diff a different like push and pull of this, so let's keep dialing it in. But I want a very slow release. So I think I might have uh, hit those notes too quick. That two minor. Cool. I think uh, this is where I always get incredibly distracted whenever I start diving into stuff like guitars. Um, well, let's just try it. liking this. Um, 
I want like a repeated riff, but not like a solo. So I'm liking the... Enough of that. Let's uh, let's just call that good. Move on to the next thing. Whatever happens after this happens, I'm liking it. Let's. Uh, I'll put the guitar down. I I gotta hear a. I'm gonna separate those two. Again, overkill because I'm making like literally over hundreds of tracks, uh, in folder form. <clears throat> but who cares? We have unlimited tracks. Basically, it's one of the best parts and the biggest downfalls of music production now but I'm not going to let it stop creativity so going in here this will just now become you guessed it kick and this one snare <clears throat> let's go in here and delete everything that's not a kick or not a snare so kick let's go in here Remove all snares. Now we have these two separated, which allows us. Um, I, you know, I know you could go in here and open up a track stack. However, I just don't like doing that. I've always done it like this. So, um, let's get in here. Space designer, give me a nice reverb. This is a lot of plugins, by the way. Nice reverb. Uh, what? I don't even care. Let's just start with whatever is default. That just sounds good as it is. But we're going to add a noise gate. Nice. In context, we have... Um, let's do more ambient guitar stuff. Duplicate. Fantastic. So let's make it super ambient. Let's add some reverbs and stuff. So let's go in here. I'm going to go to my favorite on guitars so far and pianos for that matter is Valhalla Shimmer. I, I use the crap out of these plugins and uh, man, they just sound good. Small. Now, a cool trick that I like to do is add a um, kind of like a tube saturation on top of that after the reverb. So let's go and do Supercharger GT. You know what? Let's change directions. Let's do NLS channel. Mike, raise it. Let's just try out some of these different um, saturations. So these these are all modeled after old vintage consoles, and uh, they all have different characteristics. Let's 
So let's hear what that sounds like after or before the reverb. So I, the reason I'm doing this is I don't want the inconsistency in volume between the sections. I just want it to start off like that. So I noticed with that shaker, it's not quite bouncing like I would like it to. Um, so let's kind of play with the uh, compression. So it can be kind of dangerous. If your computer is not super, like, new. It's, see, I used a computer that was a, a, a 10 years old for, I don't know, like, eight years. Um, well, I guess that would make it two years old at one point. But basically, computers age over time, and so do their components. So if you have an older computer, I wouldn't try slapping on a bunch of these, you know, processor-heavy uh, reverb plugins or, you know, anything like that. <clears throat> a lot of virtual instruments will also take a lot of power from your processing. So I, I have a very kind of recent computer. So I'm okay with doing this, although I knew if I had my old, you know, 2009 iMac, um, it'd be quite a bit slower. Just a heads up. There we go, just a nice little reverb on the shaker. So what would I do next? Um, let's take a listen at the point where shakers come in. You know, I'm hearing some boo do 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 or something like that. Some uh, synth drum kind of hits. So, man, I'm going to load up my channel count to 156. This is just going to be toms. But analog circuits is a great uh, instrument for using these kind of sounds. Not that. <laughs> okay, so let's get in there and uh, make some sounds. Not that. Zoom in. That works. So I'm just going to play it on the keyboard. Oh, first try. Let's go. But do do do. So I'm not even going to quantize it. It feels more natural if it's... Actually, I will. But it's going to be like a very quick, like so. So I have an idea. Let's do a very big snare drum hit with a... I call it an epic reverb or like the uh, epic snare. So this is really um, kind of where it gets kind of fun. So this brings in a lot of the elements of sound design as well. So I've got my drum fill. Ba -do -do -do. Cool. All righty. <clears throat> Drink some coffee. Costa Rica. Good coffee. It is cold, though, so I'm going to probably just drink it. Um, okay, epic snare. Let's go. So I'm going to take a normal snare hit. And let's solo, make a region like this, and let's just, um, can I bounce in place just the region? No, I can do the whole region. I want to do 
that to there. Bounce in place. Now I'm going to bypass effects. The reason for that is because I'm going to apply my own effects after. All right, so I also just learned you can go in here to more, and you can just reverse the clip right there, or the, the region. So let's unmute that by hitting Control M. Bring this right here. Now, this is where it's going to get kind of uh, a little bit interesting. <clears throat> I'll make another channel on here, drag my audio for that reversed snare. Let's hear what that reversed snare sounds like by itself. Nice. You know, I'm going to change this a little bit. So it's not a bit of do do do, it's just a do do do. See so what this sounds like just with the toms. Cool. So I'm going to take this, let's bounce it in place again, duplicate it, and let's unmute that. Solo this channel, and let's reverse the reversed channel. But the thing is, this is going to have, you be, you better believe it's going to have a ton of reverb. So, but it's, but it's going to like hit really quick, tail out, and like slow down kind of sound. So the way you get that is if you create a fade out by dragging out the channel. This is control shift, by the way. Do a non-linear curve, kind of like an exponential or logarithmic curve fade out. And go up here to fade out and change it from fade out to slow down. But I'm gonna I'm gonna drag this out a lot so it's like a longer. So, you know, let's 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 play a little bit with these toms. Let's do a voodoo. Let's speak this out. Boo -doo 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 -doo. Shorten that volume up. Velocity up. So it's going to hit my snare right there. Let's do a quicker fade out. Oh, that sounds dumb. Let's just hear what it sounds like in context before I get too out there with sounds. Cool. And, you know, my intention with this snare thing, let's uh, undo, undo, undo. I like this, but I need more reverb. It's kind of like my mantra for life. <clears throat> uh, add another reverb. It's going to be a huge one. Space designer. Uh, large spaces. Hall. Um, stone hall. I'll just pick one at right, random. Okay, that's a good sound so far. So I'm going to take that and bounce that in place and include audio tail. So it's a much longer region now, but the, the reason for that is that I wanted that reverb tail in there. So I can trim it up and fade it out change the fade to a slowdown, and uh, let's hear it. It's going to sound... Okay, so it includes that effect. You know, I thought we were getting there. Just give it a chance to listen. Honestly, that ain't that's not too bad. That's not too far off from what I was hearing in my head. <clears throat> but the thing is, I want to make sure this is very quiet right here. So I want to take all of these regions and just like silence them. Just for that. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of silence. Trim these up. Just for that like half beat or half half measure. 
So let's hear it now. Oh, baby, now we're talking. All right, so this is good. I want to kick my feet up a little bit, just kind of get comfortable. Okay, so I'm really liking this. Oh my gosh, this is so perfect. That's exactly what I was hearing in my head, so I'm honestly kind of stoked. So now we have a, a sick hybrid drum fill with some like slow down stuff. You know, I don't want to get too far off from uh, what I'm doing, but I'm liking I'm liking this so far. Let's change out our fade a little bit. Let's do it from the top of that region. So I think it's important that after a, a sick drum fill like that, the noise is a little bit louder than it was prior. So this is really just uh, for taste. But, um, you know, this is such overkill, and I think this is probably a really bad practice. But I'm going to just duplicate the channels instead of automate it. Let's just bump it up a decibel. This just keeps my, in my head, it keeps it cleaner, because I don't have to go in it. Where's that automation curve? Where is it? There it is. But um, cool. Just wanted to change the color on that so I can visually see what I'm looking at. I'm not going to use that guitar part. Let's just uh, get rid of that. I liked it, but I didn't have, I don't know, quite the feel that I wanted whenever I did that. So what do we do next? So my, I should have talked about this at the beginning. My process, my creative process, is to just get everything out as fast as I can without thinking about music too much. And then I subtract things to arrange it. So I have like this huge full mix, but it's only like eight bars. And then from that eight bar loop, I duplicate, remove as I arrange. Start with as much as you can, and then take out what you don't want. I think we're due for like a lead part, but it's... I don't know. I think lead lines are also kind of tricky for me to write, but I'm not stopping here. Uh, let's open up my good old trusty contact. And uh, what is this? I've never actually played it. Oh, I like that. That's fun. Another time. I think we're ready for, let's go to synth, analog dreams, leads. Uh, ah, surprise me. And you better believe I'm turning the volume down because I don't know what's coming. Synths are always louder than you expect. That has like a reminiscent sound. I I might use that. It's like super phasey. I mean, it does sound. It sounds like the '90s, '80s, I should say. Uh, let's drop an octave. See what that sounds like. This this is gonna replace my pad. I swear. I like it. <clears throat> so I'm playing the chord progression six, up to a one, down to a four major seven, two, oh, that's 
so good. Oh my gosh. I have no words. I just like that a lot. I'm like freaking out. All righty. I'll call this 80s pad. Synth pad. It's not even really like a pad, but. Someone knows the word for this or like what this actual sound is. Let me know, please. It's great. My filter it. Oh, duh, it's just a poly. It's like a, I don't know. <sighs> I gotta say, that's gonna be like the opener of this track. Um, I, I just feel it. So I'm gonna zoom out all the way by hitting Z. Close that, hit Z again. Okay, so here's our entire project. And as I go through and like create an arrangement, uh, I'm just gonna hit Command A for everything, drag the whole thing over here, make sure I'm still in sync with the measures. And uh, let's just bring this guy over. So let's just say, hey, this is gonna be the opener. Okay, so I want to duplicate again the whole thing. I, I say duplicate, I just mean move over. But let's bring in the side chain. So the side chain's place begins right here. Now I'll drag this part. Um, I'm going to duplicate this. Side chain, that poly poly lead mm. uh, compressor right there okay internal let's just change it to our normal side chain off side chain peak now let's hear what this loop sounds like now keep in mind there is no kick drum playing right here and that's intentional Cool. So, you know, next up, let's hear what it sounds like with a little bit of, um, let's bring our shakers over here. So let's see what this sounds like. I'm going to duplicate this and just bring my volume down a little bit on the second track. So next up, <clears throat> let's duplicate again. And I want, it's kind of like a progressive track, really. Four bars forward. Let's just bring in kick and snare, nothing else. So right here, what, uh, what did I just do? There. Bring out the, the uh, well, I just want kick actually. So let's bring this. Let's make it a half time side chain. I lied. Let's make it a full time side chain right there.
Uh, let's just hear what this sounds like with this part coming in. So here we go. So let's save this part for later. I don't want to open up the track too much. What would come next in this sequence? <clears throat> um, let's save the kick and snare pattern for the full beat. Uh, let's just let's just play with it. Let's just see what happens. So we got our four bars right here. So what we need right now is a riser. So a riser is essentially kind of like a swelling of sound of sorts just to lead us into the next section of the song, which I like. I prefer very simple risers. I don't want tonal stuff. I just want like a noise sweep that comes up, sw sick drum fill, and then releases. So let's... Uh, rise and hit by Native Instruments is pretty cool. However, I might just dive into, um, I don't know, keep it super simple and just use like a uh, symbol from like one of the drum kits. So let's uh let's do that. Drum kit. Uh drum kit right here, producer kits. Brooklyn. Just one of my favorites. It's a great drum kit. But basically I want So I'm listening to the stereo field because I don't feel like going in and panning stuff. So I'm just picking symbols that are kind of evenly spread across my left and right ears. That's more left, that's right. This is kind of like a little bit toward the left. And we just want one big hit. Two, three, four. Now what we do here, uh, this is kind of like hyperspeed editing. Um, make sure these are all the same length. These are one-shot samples. So basically I want to drag these out to, let's go, I don't know. This doesn't even matter. But let's just make that... Let's do velocity max, 127. Okay, let's do a bounce in place, export, no effects. I guess I'll leave the audio tail in there. Uh, let's undo that. Do this. Um, <clears throat> do not bypass audio effects. Boom. So now we just have a sweet kind of like drum sweep right there. And uh, let's go in here. Solo, we can remove our original drum channel. And the audio we have. <clears throat> That's good. Let's take out the initial transient. So now we're just left with that. Let's hyper compress, like beyond a lot. Awesome. So we're we're completely smashing the dynamic range of this. So I want this right here is what we want. So let's uh, bounce that in place. <clears throat> Actually, let's undo that. Let's add some reverb to that. You know me. Um, kind of less than half mix. Let's do a small stereo. No pitch shifting. All right, now let's go in here, bounce in place. Cool, delete our original 
Now we're left with this. Wait a sec. Nope, we're good. Let's go back. And uh, let's go up here to reverse. So we'll reverse this part. Now this is going to essentially swell into our drum hit, <clears throat> open up the file editor, and change our anchor point, which will help us in a little bit. Change this to the very end of the region. Right there. So the anchor point, the importance of this is that it allows us to anchor and our region will lock to the grid based on where our anchor point is. So if I want it to come in right here, right before the sick, nasty drum fill, right there. Wait a sec, what just happened? And I'll fade in right there, fade it in. Here what we have. So the importance of that is that we need to have some sort of release, which means we're going to duplicate again or bounce in place and reverse the reversed part. And then uh, have it right here. So I'm, I intended to do this earlier with this region. However, let's... Uh, Bring it in right there. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's un... No, not bounce in place. Let's unmute this. <clears throat> and uh, let's hear what this sounds like. Full mix, full everything. Let's unzoom. Now I'm hearing that noise, these noise generators. You gotta hear them a little bit more. Oh, another thing I forgot. <clears throat> it's important after a drop to have some sort of like ultra high frequency distant kind of sound. And the reason for this is it kind of adds a tying all together distant, uh, I don't know, texture, timbre, I guess. Let's just bring in a little bit of uh, 1980s-ish, give or take, strings. Or how about a Juno pad? Let's just go to Spectrosonics, Omnisphere, Stereo. Open this up. Let's go to Multi. I literally just searched for the word Juno. And it has a handful of these. I like Dark Juno pad. This is one of the, one of the presets I've used for a while. It's got that nice kind of like phasey detuned but I just want like a number system one and five a couple octaves up so that'll be a G and a C maybe it I'm kind of playing in the six minor I'll just do a one that'll tie it all together so one two three Now, I know that's super loud, and that's not the purpose of that, so let's bring this volume down. Make sure this region that I just played is in time. Let's uh, option shift drag to make sure the notes are the same length. Let's make the velocity very low. A little bit higher. Let's hear what it sounds like. That ought to work. And uh, let's option drag. And, uh, you know, we got to have more reverb. It's like the new cowbell. Uh, full mix, medium, and everything else as is, except for feedback. This has a little bit of pitch shift octave up, which is called shimmer. Um, this is all I want. So this is a perfect kind of sound. 
no movement, because the purpose is to just kind of add another layer of energy on top of the mix. Or you can like, kind of say like beneath or beside the mix. But it just adds more depth and a sense of distance to something out there that is there, but you can't quite hear it. So you can't hear it in the mix, but it's adding to it. You know, we can't just have a one one time loop. Let's duplicate the whole thing. <clears throat> Except shakers come in after the first four bars. Take away that um, thing, whatever that was. Shup, uh, there it is. So I'm kind of mouthing this out as I hear it in my head. Of course, you better believe we're going to slap on some sidechain compressors onto these two. I'll just make it very easy. Super quick instrument, sidechain. I need to make a preset just for this. Uh, give or take those settings. X duplicate. Get over there. Except when you duplicate a channel, I don't think. Yes, it does. Cool. So let's hit X again to close our mixer. Oh, nice. So it depends how much of the bouncing or like pulsing effect you want, um, and that is mostly mostly um, dictated by the threshold and ratio of your compressors. So I want maybe a two decibel uh, reduction or you know ducking effect on this guitar part. Cool. Wait a sec. Who knew that fade out part would be right there? Get out of here. I don't want that there. Let's get out these automation nodes as well. Cool. So let's um, unsolo that whole part and hear what it sounds like. Everything in context. Honestly, I might, you know, I might call this. I like working on this project, but I feel like I'm going to save this. I've, I'm already at an hour and 15 minutes or so uh, of recording time, so I'm probably going to edit some of that out. So we're roughly about an hour, give or take. I don't know. Hour plus. So let's just hear from the top, and uh, we'll make some critiques. Tell me what you think. Um, tell me things I don't know. Tell me things that you learned, and uh, we'll all be happy. So let's hear it. Honestly, I think after an hour or so, 
Um, I'm hoping this kind of gave some people some inspiration. So, like, music is not as complicated as, you know, you might think when you first start doing this stuff. Logic is a very vast program, and it does a lot of things that a lot of people don't know about. So, um, if I can help demystify how this works, or even some of the cool settings deeper in here, let me know. Let me know what people are uh, interested in. If you find this interesting or helpful, do me a favor and hit like or uh, share this with someone who else is learning music production because I know a lot of people are stuck at home. They have time to do this kind of stuff and uh, let's kind of help cultivate some creativity. Awesome. So thank you very much and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.